Hey guys, J-Man here, and today is Family Day. It's something that we celebrate here in uh, in Canada. I don't know if, if it's celebrated elsewhere, actually. I don't really know. But uh, I figure, uh, since it's Family Day, why don't I talk about Marvel's first family, and best family, I guess, uh, the Fantastic Four. Um, I mentioned earlier in another video that I might do some Fantastic Four stuff, so why not start today? And why not start with... Fantastic Four, number one. Okay, big issue. Started started it all. This is it, man. This is the big one. This is the... Basically, everything about Marvel came from Fantastic Four, pretty much. Like, I mean, Fantastic Four and Spider-Man are probably the two big ones. Even more so than Avengers and X-Men, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, Fantastic Four. What are you going to say? Um, issue starts off with Fantastic Four uh, being written out in the sky. Reed has a gun. He shoots it in the, in the sky. It says Fantastic Four. It's basically the Avengers Assemble or Bat Signal. Um, we cut to different... We cut to Sue, uh, Ben, and Johnny all different places. They get ready. They're like, all right, we're going we're gonna, to... This is it. We're going to assemble... Um, Sue turns invisible. It's a lot. There's a lot of weirdness because Sue turns invisible right away and then just leaves. And then the girl she was with is like, "What happened? Like she's invisible now. What happened? She she disappeared." And she runs through the crowd and hits people. And you're kind of like, "This is weird. Like why not just drive home or whatever and then become invisible later?" But anyways, it is what it is. Uh, they wanted to showcase their powers right away, um, which they did. Uh, and then Ben, who's uh, shopping for clothes because none fit him, all of a sudden rips his coat off. He rips his coat off a bunch of times in this book, which is kind of weird. It's like, does he keep putting it back on? I don't know. Whips his coat off and runs, and he's thing. Now, they don't have their costumes in this in this first issue, so he's literally just wearing, like, red um, or, like, burgundy. So he runs out. Um, he cr Like, he crashes through, like, the walls. And you're like, really? Like, couldn't you just walk through <laughs> but it's supposed to show that he's big and he causes a ruckus and then people shoot at him or whatever he goes into the ground gets out um johnny's getting his car repaired sees the four now johnny sees the four the the, fan, the words fantastic four turned into a number four he flies out he like he like flies through his car so his car through his car roof so his car's like melted up like it's just it's so weird it's like why wouldn't you get out of the car and then fly but it's just like this call to action. Like when the Fantastic Four are called, nothing shall stand in their way. That's what they're trying to, <laughs> that's what Stan and Jack, I guess, are telling us. Um, and then we're introduced to Reed. And then we get a, a quick backstory, very quick. This is one of these Marvel special backstories, which is like two pages. Um, I think it's literally two pages, maybe three. Um, everyone knows how they got their powers, so we're just going to skip that. Um, one thing of interest to note is that Ben is one of the ones who's saying, look, look, we shouldn't go into space and do all this. And Sue is like, yes, but, you know, what about the commies? So it's like, yes, what about those darn commies? We got to beat them up there. So uh, they go, of course. And then um, Ben is not happy because he's transformed into the, into the thing and he can't really transform back, at least not right now. Um, but they all decide to become the Fantastic Four and, and you know, serve mankind and all that. So they first fight the Mole Man, um, and we get a little bit of a backstory of the Mole Man, which I'm just gonna, it's again, it's like a, it's a two-pager, you know, quick Mole Man thing. He was shunned by society, girls didn't want to date him, he couldn't get a job, and then he found the center of the earth, fell down in there, lost a little bit of his sight, and then learned to control the Mole people and develop a sixth sense. Whoa! What the heck? You thought he would have just fell down there and died, but like, he actually got all these cool powers, so that's kind of neat. Um, lots of cool monsters in this one. There's like a three-headed dragon thing. There's like this other big, huge monster guy. Uh, so a lot of cool dragon stuff. <laughs> one part I really like, I'll see if you can see this properly. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but like Reed makes his hands, he like grabs his arms and then like he makes them into a lasso. So that's kind of fun. Um, this, this was obviously an amazing comic. Uh, I mean, it started it all. I like that you got a sense that they were a family they they bickered with each other and that that's an important thing in fantastic four and it's going to continue on and you really got the sense that you know they were together they learned to fight well it's it said in the dialogue or in the description that 
Um, you know, they, they're a well-oiled machine. They, they're, they're, you know, they're tight. That's what's so cool about the Fantastic Four. There's those four and they're tight. They're family. They fight together. Um, I like too that um, this is based a little bit more on science. Um, the big comparisons when you go from Marvel to DC, and I love both. I love DC as well. Um, Superman is my favorite character and Batman is my second favorite. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. For this example, what matters is that Marvel always took a slightly more realistic approach in the sense that you know, there was, it's like a pilot and a scientist and, you know, they get powers. Whereas, you know, Superman's an alien who has powers or Batman's like a super billionaire and has power or doesn't have powers, but has, you know, his, his money to help him. Um, or like Shazam, like Captain Marvel, Shazam, um, who gets it from magic or Wonder Woman, who's a goddess. So that kind of stuff, these are all kind of things where it's like, it was really hard to, to have to be. Um, I mean, Flash is like a scientist, so that's kind of cool. But you know, like Peter Parker's just a regular teenage kid. He's like a losery kid, you know, for the Fantastic Four are just regular people. So it was always sort of like, it was cool to see what regular people, uh, how they would get powers. Um, yeah, so we get, we, they fight Mole Man. It's a pretty fast fight. Um, he really doesn't really do it much. He has a little bit of a stick battle with Reed. Uh, some monsters kind of attack. Ben fights a couple. They take off. They blow up the island. Oh, it's like, it's called Monster Isle, which is great. I kept thinking like Godzilla was going to show up. And uh, they think that they buried Mole Man for good and he's done and that's the end of it. And that's how that issue ends. And they're like, you know, will we see the last of Mole Man? Well, we know that. We know the answer to that is a hell no. But what we do know is that we started off on a great comic book and Fantastic Four is one of the best. And it's just awesome. It's great. You know, does it hold up for today? Yeah, why not? You know, I don't look at stuff if it look, if it holds up for today. It, 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 it's great for when it came out. And it's still great to read these stories now. I've been reading the Human Torch and Timely Comics stuff, like the Jim Hammond uh, Human Torch, who I really, really love a lot. And, and, and some of the uh, Bill Everett, uh, Namor, like Submariner stuff from, the, from even before uh uh fantastic four so it's like really old school kind of stuff from the from day one from you know what will be known as marvel and it's really great it's really fun to read and i like it a lot and i think it's uh, i think it's high time that people start to acknowledge these more and and you know talk about them more and and you know you know and just like see more of that i know everybody wants to you know get new comics but these old ones are are, are worth something and they're special and uh, I think if you want to have like some really good understanding of what's going on in Marvel or if you want to see where it all started, now's your time. Like I, you can get all of these digital, they have these epic collections on digital, which you get, you get like a ton of issues for like next to nothing. It's worth checking out. So uh, if you're a Fantastic Four fan, uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you want me to continue these Fantastic Four talks because uh, I think I'm really enjoying re going back and reading all these again. So I wasn't a fan from day one of Fantastic Four. I, you know, I liked them. You know, I watched the cartoon. And, you know, the movies were okay. Everyone kind of poos on them. Well, the last movie was not good. But, the you know, the two other ones were okay. You know, whatever. And even the Roger Corman one was kind of like silliness fun just for the fun of it. But I think Fantastic Four is a great team. It's an important book, uh, especially for these early issues. Um, yeah, so let me know if you want more content from Fantastic Four. But, uh, yeah, just awesome. Love it. Cool. All right, guys. Until next time.